Hello everyone, this is Shania Richardson. I am the director and operator of Sarah's Tutor Book, After School Reading Tutorial, and Homeschool. And today I would like to sh share another reading strategy um, with you all to help students understand what they are reading. And I like to call it Touch the Text. The more a student is familiarized with the text, the more touches that they have with the text, the better the comprehension, especially for kinesthetic learners. Um, I am a kinesthetic learner. If I write something down or if I have to use my hands to get the answer, then I'm more likely to remember what it is that I have read without intensive study, studying thereafter. So here is just a regular read works passage. If you are a teacher, you are very familiar with this passage. Now, if you will notice, there are some highlighted words. Okay, I highlighted the words. And then after I highlighted the words, I had the student come over here on this chart. The words that I highlighted, I wrote them. Now, this student had to define the highlighted words that I listed here using contextual evidence. So these definitions were not listed in the story. So having a knowledge base of what these key words mean helps to understand the story and it increased fluency. So leafy. Braden wrote the definition leafy in the context of this passage means a plant. And then I had him write the opposite. What's the opposite of a plant? An animal. So that was his um, first touch with the text. And it also helped him to dig in deeper to figure out what the text was about. By me using the key words, he could basically get a general idea. Okay, so now the gears are warming up and his brain is on now and he's thinking about the passage. So, after the first touch with the text, of course, this is why I love Read Works passages. They have questions at the end of the story and also an answer key. So here are the questions that Braden answered right here. And I marked the ones that he got correct. Now I allowed him to answer the questions independently to test his knowledge. Now we're going to go back with the second. Well, this is probably about the third touch with the text because he read for vocabulary then he read to answer the question. Now he's going to have to go back and read again to answer the question. And so I um, left some hints about where he could find the answer. And I also went back and made annotations within the text to show him where he can go to find the answer. So after he corrects the questions that he missed today, the last thing he will do, and here are some more questions, and I just went back and made sure that he understood what the question was. So I highlighted the clues because a lot of times what students do not know is that the answer is within the question. So there's not a lot of digging you have to do because most times the answer is already in the question so that's what I was emphasizing here so after he goes back and he um, fills out and corrects what's missing the extended activity which by this time will be maybe the sixth seventh or eighth touch to extend on the activity what I did was I thought of some vocabulary that normally third graders would not use and here we have anxious depressed elated intrigued discombobulated ooh big word enlightened confident ill frightened and hardy now my directions say read the list of emotions what colors would match the emotions for example 
anxious. What color would match the word anxious? So I would think of red or maybe um, gray, maybe, or some, uh, maybe even yellow. But the interpretation of color is up to the students. Here I'm building symbolism. How do colors connect with the text? If a student does not, um, well, if he or she is not able to connect vocabulary or what they are reading with real life situations then it's hard to retain the information so today when he comes in he's going to write what color relates to the word that I have pro provided and this is appropriate extension because the title of the story is A Colorful Man, so I'm just going to continue to work that theme. Now, not only after Brayden matches a color with the emotion, he's going to use my markers, and we're going to cut out strips, squares. And he's going to write the vocabulary word that I have developed on one side and on the back he's going to write what that word means based on the definition that I have provided. So in order to richly enhance reading and vocabulary I'd recommend multiple touch. So continue to touch the text. The more that a student touches the text the more scaffolding that occurs and the more familiar they are with not just that text but these are strategies that can translate to learning in regards to other texts it's not just based on memorization and just knowing the answer to one particular story but thank you for listening and i hope that uh, this has enlightened you and that it has been to, of some enrichment to you and just try it out and see how that works and um, you are welcome to leave feedback on my YouTube page or my Facebook page. This is Shania Richardson, Director and Operator of Sarah's Tutor Book Reading Tutorial, Homework Help and Homeschool Services. Thank you for watching.